The meeting is now in session. Welcome to the August 2020 CTC virtual meeting, day two. Douglas, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes, sir. Commissioner Burke. Here. Commissioner Davis. Here. Commissioner Eager. Here. Commissioner Gordino. Present. Commissioner Inman. Here. Commissioner Kehoe. Here. Commissioner Liu. Here. Commissioner Tavoloni. Here, Norton. Present. Senator Bell. Assemblymember Frazier. I'm sure we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Um, I would like to announce some information for the public as we do for every one of our meetings. First, we welcome comments from the public and for participants joining us through the GoToWebinar system, please find the webinar panel located on the right-hand side of your screen. There you will find the audio question and handout tabs. Under the audio tab, attendees will have the choice to listen in via the computer or telephone option. Should you prefer computer audio, please ensure the appropriate box is selected. If you choose the phone call option, select the corresponding box and dial the phone number, access code and audio pin as directed by the automated system. Please note that if the audio pin is not entered, you will remain in listen only mode and will be unable to speak to the commission should you have a comment. As a reminder, each registered attendee is provided a unique link and phone number to access the webinar. These cannot be shared with other participants as they are registered to a specific attendee. There are two options for participants to provide comments on agenda item. One, using the questions tab, type in the agenda number you are commenting on in your comment. Commission staff will read the comment on your behalf. Two, alternatively, you may click on the hand icon to indicate you wish to make a comment. You will then be unmuted and called upon to make your comment. Please be sure to state your name and affiliation prior to voicing your remarks. Please do your best to be concise with your comments. Also, please make sure that your comments add new information. If you agree with the comments of a previous speaker, simply make that statement. Since we often have many speakers, we ask that you make your point in three minutes or less. If for some reason we have many speakers on a topic, I reserve the right to limit comments to one minute. And with that, I'd like to move to Mitch Weiss to begin our agenda today. Good morning. I just wanted to uh, let everybody know that there will be a handful of changes uh, relative to the project under uh, tab 84 uh, that are not on your change list. Uh, most of those changes will be just relative to one to that one project in uh, actions for a number of projects but staff will be uh, letting you know as we get to those items but because those handful of changes are already related to that one project i just wanted to let everybody know in advance thank you thank you very much and with that i'd like to move us to our very first item which is a holdover from yesterday's meeting and that is item 12 from the self-help counties, Keith Dunn. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, commissioners. And I'd like to start off by uh, thanking Lucy Dunn. It's I've had the pleasure of knowing my adopted cousin for almost 20 years. Uh, she's been a stalwart in transportation and housing and has been a joy to work with. And I'll look forward to, with the rest of you, thanking her uh, in a more formal way. I'd also like to congratulate uh, Commissioner Norton and Alvarado on their new roles in the commission. I look forward to working with you both as we move forward uh, to try and implement our self-help measures and partnering with the state in delivering our infrastructure here in California. Uh, I'd like to move real quick just to some changes with our organization. The, the Focus on the Future Conference, which most of you have attended at some point, uh, will be moving to an all virtual format this year. We're excited for a uh, the opportunity to continue to, to have a voice in the process and innovations in transportation. We look forward to working with you and your staff uh, as we build out that virtual platform. I'd also like to take a moment to, to thank your staff for working with me and others to uh, continue to participate in these meetings. They've been great and uh, my user error uh, they've been able to correct. So thank you to everyone there. I'd like to shift for a second and, and talk a minute about the executive order, which some of my colleagues mentioned yesterday. 
on the transportation action plan and investment strategies. We as self-help counties also met and would like to thank Darwin Musabi from CalSDA for the opportunity to participate uh, in some meetings with them and have a, a survey that was sent out addressing what CalSDA listed as their best ideas for implementation. And while we appreciate the opportunity to comment on their survey, uh, we don't think that that is necessarily the most collaborative process uh, to help deliver that program. Um, we would like to request an opportunity to have a more formal meeting and perhaps I would suggest, and I sent a letter to Executive Director Weiss and, and hopefully he'll get that out and share it with the commissioners, but we'd like to have an opportunity to have a forum and my suggestion would be perhaps at the October CTC meeting where not only the self-help counties, but all of those interests from business to labor to transportation agencies and housing could have a more formal discussion exchange of ideas. Again, we appreciate the opportunity to, to participate and comment on the survey, but we think a more collaborative process would bring in transportation experts from all sectors uh, that maybe have a different perspective that hasn't been captured in the survey that was around. So we look forward, hopefully, for that opportunity to continue to, to comment on that process. Um, we look forward to the participation of the CTC in helping to deliver those policy goals. I know that from the self-help counties perspective, we have experts who bring a wide breadth of knowledge to this discussion, and we look forward to working with Cal STA and all the other stakeholders to make sure that we're capturing the best ideas to deliver these very important policies to the citizens of California. Um, with that, I will close my comments and just again say thank you for working with me and uh, allowing me the opportunity to provide these comments today. And with that, I'd be happy to, to answer any questions that may arise. Thank you very much. Um, we want to make sure that Douglas is going to send out your letter to all of the commissioners. And uh, so thank you very much. Uh, Mitch just made sure that we had the letter and, and could send that out. Are there any questions for uh, Keith Dunn from our commission members? Just chime in. Uh, if not, are there any public comment items? No. Well, thank you, Mr. Dunn, and we will look forward to reading your letter and working with you on that collaborative response process. Thank you very much. With, absolutely. Um, with that, we would like to start our agenda at item 48. And um, we are going to be taking uh, tabs 48 through 52 together. So, uh, Terry, why don't you start us off? Sure. Good morning, commissioners. Items 48 to 52 are action items requesting an initial construction allocation for an amount that exceeds the programmed amount by more than 20 percent. Um, item number 48 is a project that proposes to upgrade sidewalks, driveways, and curb ramps to meet current ADA standards. Based on the most current engineer's estimate, the department is requesting an initial allocation of 7.4 million for construction capital and 1 million for construction support. The increased construction capital and support costs are due to several changes to the original scope, including adding a pedestrian footbridge with a sidewalk and median refuge, flashing beacon and necessary electrical equipment, a signal pole at Elk Valley Road, loop detectors, adjusting grades at sidewalks, hardscaping, additional drainage work at intersections, and the management of contaminated soil and groundwater associated with new drainage infrastructure. Um, and I don't know, Chair, if you'd like me to, to take a break between each one if there's questions or comments. Um, I just briefly, I would just like to say um, with tab 48, especially as someone who had a grandmother who spent her last 12 years of her life in a wheelchair, that this complete project is very impressive. And I just wanted to thank the people who are working on this and this Caltrans district for making a very complete project. And it's the kind of project we want to see because it really, as you had pointed out, Terry, was one of the most thorough um, handling of not only the ADA components, but some of the issues about um, drainage and other things that I think really matters as we're looking for complete streets projects and Caltrans work. So thank you very much for highlighting this for us and I'll move on quickly. So um, sure. are there any other comments from the commissioners? Okay, let's move to item 49. Sure, 49 is a project that proposes to widen shoulders, upgrade ramps for compliance with ADA, and install a bus turnout um, on State Route 299 in Humboldt County. 
Um, based on the most recent engineer's estimate, the department is requesting an initial allocation of 4.4 million for construction capital and 1.1 million for construction support. Um, I don't know if there's any questions on that or I'll move to number 50. Number 50, sure. No, please move forward, that's fine. Okay, we can always do questions at the end if anything else comes up. Um, project right. number 50 is a project on State Route 99 in Sacramento. Um, the project proposes to replace an existing bridge superstructure, um, the 21st Avenue undercrossing on State Route 99 with a new precast voided slab. Uh, the department is asking for an initial allocation of 6.6 .6 million for construction capital and 980,000 for construction support. Item okay. number 51 is a request um, for a project on State Route 1 in Santa Barbara County. The request is for an allocation of $4 million for construction capital and $1.3 million for construction support. 52 is a project in on State Route 65 in Merced County. It's a shop ADA curb ramp project, and the department is requesting an initial allocation of $4.2 million for construction capital and $971,000 for construction support. Staff has reviewed these items and recommends approval of items 48 through 52. Okay, if there are no questions, can we get a motion to approve? Uh, Commissioner Eager, so moved. Okay. Do we have a second? Commissioner Alvarado seconds. Thank you. Uh, Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Thank you very much. Um, now we'll take 53 and 54 together. Terry. Sure. Commissioners, item 53 is a supplemental fund request to re-advertise a project on US 101 in Santa Barbara. Um, the project proposes to upgrade the existing Gaviota safety rest area wastewater system. In August of 2019, the commission allocated 3.9 million in construction capital and 1.3 million in construction support. After the, low, after the first low bidder declined the project, the department determined that repackaging and re-advertising the project was necessary. The amount to re-advertise the contract based on the most recent engineer's estimate is 5.2 million for construction capital. Um, and therefore the department is requesting supplemental funds of 1.4 million for construction capital and 240,000 in construction support to re-advertise this project. Number 54 is a project requesting supplemental funds to allocate, or I'm sorry, to award a project. Um, this is a project on State Route 173 in Santa, San Bernardino County. Um, it's a project that proposes to realign the roadway, construct a soil nail wall and replace the guardrail with a concrete barrier. Uh, the department is requesting um, supplemental funds of 2.3 million in construction capital to award this project. And staff has reviewed these items and recommends commission approval of items 53 and 54. Okay, are there any Madam um, Chair? comments from, yes, Fran. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Inman, yes. Uh, Madam Chair, I wish to make a motion to support staff's recommendation. Okay, is there a second? Second. Commissioner Alvarado, second. Thank you. Uh, uh, Commissioner Burke and Commissioner Alvarado, second. Um, Douglas, I, could you read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the item is approved. 
Okay, and now we're going to take uh, 55 to 57 together. Terry? Commissioners, items 55 through 57 are supplemental fund allocations to complete construction. The first project, um, item number 55, is a shop uh, bridge seismic restoration project on State Route 70 in Plumas County. In March 2017, the project contract was awarded to the lowest qualified bidder for $11.7 million in construction capital. Um, however, project delays have resulted in the need for an added construction season. And due to that, the department is requesting $1 million in construction support to complete the project construction. Item number 56 is a project. Um, it's a shop bridge rail replacement project on state routes 201 and 216 in Tulare County. Um, again, this is a project that was awarded back in November 2018 for 11 million in construction capital. Um, however, due to various issues that were discovered during construction, um, additional funds are needed and the department is requesting an additional 2.9 million in construction capital and 1.4 million in construction support to complete this project. Item 57 is a project in um, Orange County on State Route 57. And this is a project where um, a truck hits a um, center median overhead sign structure. And um, due to the nature of the work, it was a very fast paced um, emergency order project. Um, however, additional funds are needed to close this out above and beyond what was what is within the department's ability to authorize um, under their G11 resolution. So they're requesting an additional 740,000 in construction capital and 400,000 in construction support to complete the work necessary on this project. Staff has reviewed these items and recommends commission approval of 55, 56 and 57. Thank you very much. And before we make a motion, um, Commissioner Eager has a comment on item 56. Commissioner uh, Eager? Yes I, yes, I just wanted to uh, welcome the new District 6 uh, Director, Diana Gomez. Um, and I know she was part of 56. <clears throat> so we just wanted to welcome you, Diana. <clears throat> Wonderful. OK, with that, um, could we get a motion on 55 through 57? Yes, Commissioner Liu moves the items. Okay, is there a second? Commissioner Davis second the items. Thank you very much. Uh, Douglas, please do the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Mr. Tavaloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you so much. And next, we're going to take uh, 58 and 59 together. Terry? Sure. Commissioners, 58 and 59 are requests for supplemental funds to close out projects. So we typically see these when the construction contract has closed out and there's some sort of a claim against the department. Um, on project number 58, this was an emergency order project um, near the city of Williams. Um, and due to, again, due to the fast nature of these emergency projects, um, the department wasn't just wasn't keeping up, I, th I would say, with, with some of the invoices. Um, they, did, they did try to get the contractor to expedite re, um, turning in the invoices, but unfortunately there was a slew of invoices that came in after the project was closed out. And so the only way for the department to um, pay those is with the supplemental funds that they're requesting. Um, the department has looked at how they can um, avoid this situation in the future and so they have um, worked with some, with the department to come up with some internal um, controls so that hopefully this we won't see these in the future so 58 is requesting 118,000 in construction capital and 83,000 in construction support to close out that contract um, number 59 is also a closeout and this was for 
claims against the department on um, State Route 18, a project on State Route 18 in Los Angeles County. As part of that project, the department had used, like they typically use, lo some local roads for a long-term detour. Um, it did cause damage to the pavement. Um, the good news here is, is the department has a pretty savvy group of folks who went out and looked at the pavement um, and did an analysis and said that the damage due to the detour um, was far less than what the county was originally claiming. And so at this point, they've come to an agreement um, and the department is requesting 671,000 in construction capital to compensate the county and close out the construction of this project. Staff has reviewed these items and recommends commission approval of items 58 and 59. Okay, are there any comments on these items? If not, could we entertain a motion? Commissioner Alvarado makes a move to, makes a motion to support staff recommendation. Great. Keho seconds. Thank you. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes, sir. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Commissioner Eager. Mr. Guardino. Aye. Mr. Inman. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Mr. Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. And we're keeping me informed as to whether public comment is coming in on any items. So thank you. Just to let the audience know, we, we, we are being notified if anyone wishes to speak on public comment. And with that, um, Jose, we are looking forward to your reports on 60 and 61. Thank you for joining us. Yes, good morning, Madam Chair, commissioners and members of the public. Item 60 is an action item. This is the final EIR for the Wildwood Road reconstruction project. The Trinity County Board of Supervisors determined that environmental impacts could be reduced to less than significant levels. Item 61 is an action item. This is the final EIR for the Shoemaker Bridge replacement project. The Long Beach City Council determined that environmental impacts could be reduced to less than significant levels. Staff recommends approvals of items 60 and 61. Okay, with no comments from the public, are there any questions from the commissioners? Okay, with that, can we have a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, this is Commissioner Davis, and I would uh, recommend to move the two items. Thank you. Commissioner Eager seconds. Thank you very much. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Mr. Cavalloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair Thank you very much. And uh, item 62, the update on Caltrans facilities. Terry, thank you very much for your presentation. We're looking forward to it. So, good morning again, commissioners. Item number 62 is an information item in which Caltrans will be providing you with an update on their facilities plan. This item was last presented to the commission at the August 2017 meeting. At that time, there were questions raised by commissioners about the purpose of the plan and the process that Caltrans uses to evaluate the existing conditions of a building and the future needs. Caltrans informed the commissioners at that meeting that they had a consultant that they had hired that year to do assessments on all buildings over 50 years old, and that those assessments would be the basis of future prioritization of work. Caltrans, uh, Shannon Simile is here to provide the presentation. Good morning, commission members. I'm Shannon Simile. Can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. Awesome, thank you so much. It's my pleasure to give this presentation today as it's my first opportunity since coming to Caltrans in December of 2018. Uh, this presentation has been scheduled many times, but never quite stuck. So I'm happy to finally make it here. Well, at least virtually that is. Um, in addition to myself being new at Caltrans, the top two levels of management under me, approximately five positions, are all new or currently vacant as well. 
soon after my arrival, I had uh, had learned that there was a retirement tidal wave coming my way within the next six to 18 months. Today, thankfully, three of those five positions have been filled and the two remaining management positions should be filled by October. Uh, thus far, only one person within that management team has uh, three years or more than three years of tenure with Caltrans. So I bring that up just to state we've got a brand new management team uh, on a steep learning curve trying to catch up with the uh, past operations and current operations going forward. So with that, we'll move on into the presentation. Next slide, please. The Division of Business Operations has statewide responsibility for Caltrans office buildings, and that will be the, the focus of today's presentation. Specifically, we'll go over the portfolio, the overall uh, facility types within Caltrans, walk through the process for identifying and, and addressing building needs, take a look at the expenditure breakdown of those projects, and then take a look at the future opportunities for Caltrans, uh, given the state that we find ourselves in. At the very end, there will be an opportunity for questions as well. Next slide, please. Taking a look at this, starting off with our transportation related facilities from the Caltrans portfolios. As you see, there are four primary categories of uh, transportation related facilities. And here identifies each of the divisions that have oversight responsibilities for those facilities. Uh, additionally, there are com commercial vehicle enforcement facilities, rest roadside rest stops, park and rides, and field uh, construction field offices. Not being my area of expertise and playing it safe, it's about all I can accurately say and communicate on the TRFs. Uh, thoughts are that if there's uh, interest there, perhaps we can have a future presentation specifically on the transportation related facilities. Next slide, please. As stated, the Division of Business Operations is responsible for the Caltrans statewide office buildings, which comprise a significant portion of the capital investment within Caltrans overall facilities portfolio. There are 12 district offices and including and then also the Sacramento headquarters office, all of which encompass approximately 3.3 million square feet, which in comparison is roughly about 76 acres. Maintenance and response maintenance uh, responsibility of these facilities falls into four areas. Um, districts one, five, and nine are solely managed by Caltrans, uh, owned and managed. DGS does not provide services out in rural areas. Um, then we have uh, DGS solely operated uh, facilities. The districts three and 11 are owned and operated completely by DGS. And then we have a partnership where Caltrans owns property or owns the uh, district offices, but DGS provides various services for Caltrans. And that could go anywhere from only janitorial services to a whole suite of uh, services, including janitorial grounds, uh, mechanics for the buildings, building engineers, contracts. It just varies at each of the diff those different locations. And then lastly, District 12 is a leased building. So the maintenance responsibilities are taken care of there by the lessor. Next slide, please. Um, be, it, be it the primary responsibility of DGS or Caltrans, building maintenance activities are performed through various expertise of on-site staff, such as chief and stationary engineers, maintenance mechanics, building uh, chief of uh, plant operators, and so forth. And their work is overseen by building managers who ensure proper operation and maintenance of the various components. Building maintenance activities and equipment performance data is collected, tracked, and monitored through management software programs and or manual logs. Building conditions are evaluated and assessed through a collaboration with DGS, Caltrans technical staff, and consultants hired to perform assessments when necessary. As illustrated in the slide, Building condition assessments have been conducted within recent years at all of Caltrans owned buildings with exception of three, which are newer in age by at least 30 years in comparison and did not require assessments. However, 
District 7, which opened in September of 2004, did have building assessment assessments completed in August of 2016 due to equipment performance concerns. I'll expand more upon this point within the presentation. Next slide, please. Our deferred maintenance program, through a collaborative process, the Division of Business Operations staff work with building managers to develop and assess deferred maintenance projects. Priorities are set based on fire life and safety impacts, equipment condition, meaning frequent repairs, failed equipment, or nearing end of life, and available funding. The deferred maintenance projects are funded through the admin program budget. I will share more in the details of funding further within this presentation. Listed on the slide are the primary deferred maintenance project categories. Next slide, please. These pie charts provide a visual display of the deferred maintenance categories by percentage of funds expended statewide for the last two years. As you can see, expenditures vary greatly year by year, depending on the identified statewide office building needs. Next slide, please. Um, office building projects that exceed the funding capacity within the deferred maintenance budget can be pursued through the shop, or may be pursued, I should say, through the shop. The 2020 shop does not include any new maintenance projects for office buildings. However, these three shop projects are currently in progress and were previously approved in prior shop cycles. As mentioned earlier, premature building condition assessments have been conducted at District 7 due to numerous ongoing functional issues such as roof leaks, HVAC, and water chemistry concerns. The roof and boiler repair projects were based on findings and recommendations from those assessment reports. Just briefly, the District 7 uh, description of the District 7 project is an existing roof where numerous deficiencies, leaks specifically, have caused the roof to fall into poor condition. District 7's boilers, the reports found that the burners and the existing boilers needed replacement to meet future south Coast Air Quality manage, Management District requirements. In addition, the boiler lifespan had been shortened due to calcium buildup from water chemistry issues in the heater tubes. District 4, work on the elevator project there uh, is due to the um, ex to extend the life, the service life and improve performance due to the age about approximately 29 years Many of the elevator components are obsolete and cannot expeditiously be repaired or serviced. And the recommendation on that one was to um, have it repair, uh, the elevators repaired. Next slide. In 2017 and 19, building condition assessments con uh, conducted on Caltrans aging buildings rated each of, those, each of those buildings in poor condition, and the poor condition range, I should say, which is not surprising given their age, which falls between 84 and 62 years old. However, age is not an, is, does not automatically equate to lower ratings as many environmental and maintenance factors contribute to a building's condition. Clearly and understandably, due to the, it, economic uncertainties, that plan is now on hold. As the way in which we conduct business has now changed virtually and largely, uh, being largely virtual nowadays, it is critical to reassess what our space requirements and office layout will be moving forward and adjust as appropriate. The significant changes of today may lead to adjustments in the priorities set in 2018. But when the timing is right, Caltrans will ensure that these projects tie directly to the respective SHSMP and SHOP. Additionally, LEED and ZNE standards will be incorporated in our office building replacement projects. Next slide, please. 
In compliance with executive orders, Caltrans has reduced water use by 13% from the 2013 baseline. Additionally, approximately 61,000 LED bulbs were installed in office buildings statewide to improve, improve energy efficiency. Caltrans occupies five locations that has LEED certified. If we count our lease locations, we actually have seven. And as you can see here, we have one that's certified, four that fall into the silver cat certification category, and one that has fallen in, in the gold category. Next slide, please. Moving into our office building expenditure, expenditures for fiscal year 1920, the total spent was 85.6 million, and the slide illustrates the percentage of funds expended in each category. It is easy to see that DGS receives more than half of the office building annual funding. The DGS billing expenditures will go into further detail in the next slide. In far second place, our lease expenditures, which also provides funds to DG, DGS for two office buildings here in the Sacramento area. The last three categories all fall within one point or percentage point of each other. Next slide. On the DGS breakdown, we see that 49% of the expenditures are directly attributable to districts three and 11 for bond service, so your debt service for bonds and operating and maintenance by DGS. In 2016, the district 11 bond was refinanced. Although bonds can be refinanced in today's, in today's rate environment to save money, that decision is made by the state treasury office and public works board, as well as DGS. Timing is always important too. With an uncertain economic situation of the state, it may be a concern to refinance. The next largest portion goes to operation and expense costs to service all of the other buildings which include districts two, four, six, seven, eight, 10 and headquarters. The central plan and leasing charges are fees set by DGS. As well, the, uh, and then the last two remaining are for planner costs and form 22 costs, uh, setting up ARF accounts for projects related to space, uh, working with DGS. Next slide, please. Opportunities to transform. The pandemic has created many undesirable situations and changes that impact everyone. However, it has also created opportunities for significant beneficial transformation that may not have been previously possible. Our workforce is shifting towards adapting to telework and that may hold potential to reduce least building costs. By reevaluating our needs, Partnering and learning from industry experts, we can form new concepts on space and Caltrans can incorporate and adjust the uh, adjustment and make a, I'm sorry, and make adjustments that will result in efficiencies. Circling back to the long range plan from 2018 for building replacements, we now have the opportunity and the responsibility as good stewards of the state financial and physical resources to reevaluate decisions and ensure they are appropriate for today's world. With that, I will close and thank you for your time and open it up to questions. Thank you very much. We do have um, a, a few questions from commissioners and we have public comments. So um, I'd like to start with Commissioner Liu and then Commissioner Inman, and then I have a question myself. Okay, Matt, happy to take them, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and Chen, thank you for the presentation. Uh, very interesting things going on with the facilities and, and the maintenance and management. Uh, I, it just kind of hit me while you were presenting that we probably should uh, be tracking VMT reduction associated with uh, the work from home program, as well as the cost savings of using uh, less office space. And I'm interested to see how that plays out over the long term. 
but my question that I had uh, going into the presentation had more to do with the fact that for some of these things that are considered uh, maintenance um, or you know uh, energy efficiency measures like the LED light replacement, they have not only the benefit of reducing you know climate and air quality impacts and energy demand, but also they have a return on investment and they save us money over time. Uh, a lot of the energy efficiency measures do that, and I was just wanting to make sure that of the, I mean, I assume you've done this, you've, you've sat down, you've looked at which one of these things have the best return on investment, and, and that we're trying to make sure that none of the deferred maintenance uh, efforts that we're undertaking are being put off because they have uh, some sort of energy efficiency measures that actually pay themselves off over time and, and would be good investments regardless uh, of um, whether they're just good green technology practices. So, yes, so thank you for your question. And that is definitely a part of the consideration in looking at the return on investments and the benefit of, even though it may be uh, costly at the beginning part, long range, if the cost offsets, the savings offset that, that is taken into consideration. Um, you know, I will, I will say that I think our challenge is always trying to balance the priorities of uh, what can be addressed within our budget, ensuring that we are making, um, paying, paying special attention to safety, health and safety, and uh, prioritizing those with some of the ages of our buildings. I think that uh, oftentimes those are the ones that uh, come up and uh, become a priority over being able to get to a point of priorities. But I mean, I'm sorry, a, a point of efficiencies. However, it is included within our process to take into consideration. Okay, thank you for that answer. Uh, Commissioner Inman. Thank you, Chair Norton. And really, uh, Shannon, great presentation to appreciate it. And just following up on uh, Commissioner Liu, I, I do hope that we're doing a quick analysis of vehicle miles traveled savings. Uh, we know where our employees live, and you know we know that our offices are pretty much uh, significantly closed. So I think we could really learn a lot. And who knows where post COVID we're going to land? I'm hoping we land in some hybrid world where we get together occasionally and then we work uh, remotely uh, other times too. But a couple of things. One, uh, talking about the energy efficiency, the Energy Commission, in response to the Skinner bill, and I think it was. Uh, 758, but I could have the bill number wrong. But basically, it was the bill that required all existing buildings in the state reduce their energy usage by 50%. Uh, and I think that was a 2030. And so I'm not sure how, have you done energy audits on all of these? And to Commissioner Liu's point, you know, some of these can be very, very cost effective. Obviously, lighting is often the low hanging fruit, but there are other components as well. So I really, I, I'd like us because the Energy Commission and their energy efficiency plan asked the state to lead by example. So I think that that sends a strong message if we uh, can really do that. And when we've had presentations on this in the past, and I asked, uh, you know, it was a question of, uh, cost, but I think we really do need to look and see where are we and, you know, to um, really look at um, your roofing. Uh, you mentioned roofing, but if as a commercial, working in commercial real estate in my day job, the worst nightmare any property owner can have is a, a roof penetration. Uh, and so I think roofs have to be up there on the top of your list. And then there's some materials that you can save energy depending on what roof you use too. So I think we've got to really look holistically around those things. And then finally with district seven, that building, when did that building open? 2004, September. 
Okay, so it's way too young to be having all of these expenses. And so a roof replacement, I couldn't tell if it was repairs or total replacement, but I mean, do we have some defects there? I mean, I we, think we really need to look holistically at that building. It has been troubled. We had a huge item on the last time we had a presentation mm -hmm. on this too with District 7. So I think if we can really take a, a serious look at, you know, can that building be saved kind of thing? I, I don't know. Uh, it's way too new compared to some of our others and it was a lead silver. So it should have been energy efficient and we should have lower operating costs. And we seem to me to be having higher. So I think we've got to take a separate look. And then finally, in closing, I would like us to have a separate discussion around those non-building items, whether it's the way stations, or the roadside rest because i know those are important uh for us for all kind of reasons and so if we can make sure we do a separate conversation on that i appreciate it thank you um, absolutely absolutely uh so in response thank you uh commissioner inman for your comments there and i um the vehicle miles traveled i do believe is being uh captured uh whether it's within sustainability or other groups that are here uh the division of uh, business operations is not specifically focused on capturing that data but i do know and have heard of uh efforts and conversations uh, here within Caltrans, so that is being looked at and captured, and I think uh, if not within the districts, uh, potentially in a, in a holistic view as well. Um, and I think that is an important, important, important metric as well as component that needs to be factored into um, our decisions regarding office buildings and things. Um, going into your the energy. Um, question um since i've been here in two, uh, december of 2018 there has not been any um new evaluations or um investigations into improving efficiency i do agree and i am focused on wanting to address that uh, now that i've got a little bit more understanding of caltrans and the operations here and we've gotten past a couple of our big pushes that were going on i hope to be able to focus on that towards uh the future and take a big uh step forward in uh knowing where we can improve implement additional efficiencies and meet the goal of 2020. Um, on the District 7 roofing, yes, I completely agree with you. There have been ongoing issues with the building, I think, since the time uh, or early on and since the time that it opened. There have been various uh, assessment reports going back as early as 2012, multiple ones that were done in 2016 that looked at different components. Uh, I myself, since I've been here, have been um, partnering with DGS to, uh, we have repeated meetings at uh, regarding District 7, um, more than quarterly, I will say, and ongoing conversations to improve operations, to partner with them, to help remove barriers that they have and improve the services that we're getting there. So completely agree with you. The building is way too new to be in the condition that it is. And uh, we look forward to taking actions to help resolve those. Um, and then lastly, with the TRFs, I will be sure to carry forward that message and, uh, and you know, look towards having uh, future conversations regarding those areas for you from those areas, uh, divisions that are responsible. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Terry, I know you had a response to uh, this issue as well. And then I have a question. Sure. Now, good questions from Commissioner Inman. I, I appreciate your expertise in this area. Um, with regards, you made a comment about non-building items, and um, I just want to point out that within the Transportation Asset Management Plan um, and the supplementary assets, there is a category for, for those um, transportation-related facilities, and so the department does track those within the Asset Management Plan. But I, but if, but we can still have a discussion about those. So I'm, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to make sure you were aware of that. Uh, just, you know, we've struggled with the rest areas, how long they're closed, when they're closed, and I think we've just all been 
focused on that uh, recently with the essential goods and needing to make sure that those are available. And, you know, Secretary Kim has worked with us and we have food trucks now to make sure that our uh, truckers can get fed. So I think uh, given the world we're in, we see people traveling, venturing out a little bit, primarily via cars. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I think that's an area we need to make sure that we can do whatever we can to keep those clean and safe and open. Agreed, definitely. Okay, um, I'll call on uh, Director Weiss and then I will um, ask my questions. Uh, so Shannon, in I think it was 2015, the Department of General Services came out with a report on state-owned office buildings that listed, uh, you know, I, I want to say like, you know, 30 or something office buildings by a facility cost index. Do we use that same metric for evaluating our office buildings? And if so, what is our, what is the rating of some of those? And if not, why are we not using the metric the rest of the state is using? So um, thank you, uh, Director Inman. I mean, sorry, not Inman. Uh, Weiss, I'm sorry. Um, so at Caltrans, the recent study that was done at the headquarters building, which was in 2019, um, was actually done through DGS along with a few other state buildings uh, here in the Sacramento area that were not included within the 2015 report. That report came back and identified that um, in today's state, uh, and I don't, sorry, I don't have the actual rate number in front of me, but uh, basically today's rate, the headquarters building falls within, um, I'm not sure if it's good or an acceptable state, and <laughs> it, gave do, it gave dollar amounts that um, w would be necessary to continue um operating within that frame it later stated so this is the only report that we've done that gave a today rating and a 10-year rating it did identify that within 10 years we will fall within the core range and it would take more than 99 million dollars to rehabilitate the building to stay within the acceptable range so at that point it falls into the core category and um falls within that. All of the other buildings that we uh, have done assessments on did not give a point in time or a day assessment. It only gave an overall or a 10 year. Sorry, I'll have to try to clarify what I'm saying, but I know those only gave the 10 year out range, I think is what it was. And all of those fell within that. It's a very large range of poor um, going all the way up to a rating, I think of 63 or 64 down to the low teens or something. Um, but that is the same measurement rating of the other, of what DGS did. Great. Thank you very much. If, if, if you could just, uh, you know, offline, just send us where, uh, what the, what those numbers look like and maybe in comparison to what else DGS has in, has in their portfolio. Absolutely. And we have, I think, um, I don't have it off the top of my head, but I do know that we have taken a look at where our ratings would fall within the prioritized list or the rating list that DGS has um, and see where we would fall into that mix uh, um, with that. So I will definitely uh, take a look at that and send you what we have. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Uh, thank you. And I'd now like to get to my questions. And um, Shannon, if you would, could you pull, call up the slide about LEED certification uh, yeah. in your presentation? Yeah, and I and think your your staff are doing that, so they I think they're pulling okay. it up, right? Okay, um, but I I want to share and echo uh, Fran's uh, Commissioner Inman's comments about uh, District Seven, and it would be great if we could get a report on how much it has cost to work on a building that opened in two thousand four, and the fact that we're spending three million dollars on the roof now um, is is concerning. To, to me as well. Um, I, I also, I'm pleased to see that you're making strides in green building achievements and, and it would be helpful to look at what that has done to um, reduce our energy costs and, and highlight how 
our state buildings are following through on the mandates that we have been sending sending out for other buildings. And mm -hmm. so this is very, very helpful. And and being it would it would help if we could get a report as to what that has done to reduce the overall operational costs and savings over time in our buildings. Um, and one of the things I wanted to raise is that as Caltrans is working with us on our equity hearings, I'd be very interested in finding out how accessible um, these buildings are to transit, and especially for people who want to work at Caltrans and are from communities that may be um, in transit deserts, how accessible it, are they to begin to um, either be accessible by telecommuting or by transit if people wanted to start joining the workforce from non-traditional um, communities. Okay, okay, absolutely, we can take a look at that. Um, but I, I would like a further comment on the District 7 building because it is a concern that something that was supposed to be this architectural achievement has been such a costly endeavor. Um, do you have any analysis of how much it has cost for us? You know what, off the top, I do not have in front of me. I do know that um, to address some issues that were back in um, 2012, I know that there were um, water chemistry issues. And again, not being here uh, back at that time and just trying to go back and uh, recreate and understand what has happened here at, at uh, Caltrans historically, I do believe that there were some um, Mm -hmm. I don't have it, the, it off the top of my head. I do know that there was money transferred over to DGS to tackle some projects at that time. And I believe it had to do with uh, water, water chemistry issues, calcium buildup, and some other items that took place at that time. Uh, um, not compressors. Um, let me not try to speak when I will have the wrong information. Uh, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of about $5 million back at that point in time. Um, and again, like I said, there was uh, numerous assessments that have been done on, on the building and uh, pointing towards different problems that were there at the time. So I agree, and Caltrans is equally as frustrated and um, looking towards trying to determine solutions that will resolve the problems that are going on there. Thank you very much. Uh, Director Weiss had some additional comments. Yeah, just uh, related to the uh, District 7 uh, building, my recollection is the Dif District 11 office building was the one that was built uh, in time closest to that. So if, when we're looking at the District 7 uh, maintenance and operation costs, perhaps we can compare it to something that is you know, as close to a contemporary pro uh, building uh, that Caltrans has, like the District 11 office building, just for perspective. Okay, sounds that, that sounds like a good idea. Okay. Uh, and um, are there any other questions from any other commissioners? Okay. Well, Shannon, thank you very much for this very thorough presentation. And we look forward to your report backs on the questions we asked. Awesome. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You as well. Okay. And now we're on to items uh, tab 63 and uh, 64 will be taken together for John Prey. Thank you so much, John. Yes. So 63 and 64, I will, they're both shop amendments and I will be recommending some changes that will impact one project that's included in both items. So my plan is to present both items and then I'll turn it back over to you. So item 63 is an action item to amend the 2018 shop. The reason we are making amendments to 2018 shop projects is because these amendments are all making changes to projects that are programmed in the 1920 fiscal year, which is not included in the 2020 shop. As Mitch mentioned at the beginning of today's meeting, staff is recommending that project number five on reference number 2.1A1D, which is PPNO 2426C, be pulled from this item. So with this change, these amendments will add a total of 10 projects and revise a total of 12 projects. The 10 new projects that are being added are all emergency projects. Staff reviewed these amendments and finds that they are consistent with the shop guidelines, as well as the commission adopted TAMP. 
and with the exception of project number five on reference 2.1 A1D, staff recommends approval of this item. And this is oh, sorry, John, please continue. You want, I'll, I'll do 64 real quick. Um, so 64 is an action item to amend the 2020 shop. Again, as Mitch mentioned previously, staff is recommending that projects seven and eight on reference number 2.1 A2D, which are PPNO's 2429Y and 2429X be pulled from this item. And so with this change, these amendments will add a total of 12 new projects and revise a total of 12 projects currently programmed in the 2020 shop. Staff has reviewed these amendments and finds that they are consistent with the shop guidelines as well as the commission adopted TAMP and with the exception of project seven and eight on reference number 2.1 A2D, staff recommends approval of this. <laughs> okay, this we have an attendee. Sorry, Commissioner Gardino, before we take your motion, um, as amended, uh, we have an attendee comment. Yes, we have uh, Tim Gubbins followed by Sarkis Kacek. Tim, you are now unmuted and free to speak. Okay, thank you. This is uh, Tim Gubbins. I am the Caltrans District 5 uh, Director. And so I just wanted to give the commissioners a little bit of explanation on some of the changes that your staff has just um, painstakingly out outlined. Um, these are all related to the Santa Barbara South Coast 101 corridor, which um, I believe most of you would be familiar with. You know, that's, that in includes the HOV lanes, rehabilitation and, and in the shop, as well as related local projects. So yesterday it was brought to our attention, there was a discovery of a rather unique abnormality um, in the paperwork filed uh, by Caltrans with CTC. And so we were working with your staff on a remedy. At this point, it appears we cannot move forward with absolute certainty today. And so that is the reason for the change. Um, just to outline the importance of the projects we're talking about, as um, I believe this commission has been told, we have been using CMGC, the construction manager general contractor practice on this corridor for the delivery process. At this point, in anticipation of allocations, we have an agreed upon price with the contractor and that was um, contingent on beginning the work in October, early October of 2020. That time had been chosen because work windows with had to be outside of a nesting season for protected species and you know which reduces the contractor work window and we're balancing that with the winter delays and then things happening in the spring and summer next year so delays in allocation will lead to delays and begin work um, we're gonna have to revisit that agreed upon price the entire construction season, you know, we need we will need to work very closely with our general contractor to see how much, if any, can be salvaged. And so, I just wanted to uh, emphasize the close work we're doing with your staff to see what could be done, as well as the importance of the corridor and moving forward in any way we can. So, thank you. Thank you, Sarkis. Sarkis, you are now muted. You're currently self-muted, Sarkis. Thank you. Okay. Good, good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commissioners, and Executive Director Weiss. My name is Sarkis Kocek, and I'm Director of Programming with the Santa Barbara County Association of Governments. First off, congratulations to Commissioners Norton and Alvarado on your election as Chair and Vice Chair. Uh, we are thankful and grateful for the Commission support and the investment of Senate Bill 1s in this critical corridor. As Mr. Gubbins mentioned, we've been working in partnership with the district and Caltrans for many years on this project. And so we understand the, um, the, the impacts of uh, the allocation um, decision today, and we totally understand that. Um, we do look forward to working with the commission and Caltrans on an allocation for this project in the future. Um, so we can continue the great progress that we've been making in our corridor. Um, you know, the, any impact to costs are uh, definitely uh, critical, um, but there's also the impact on jobs maintained and jobs created, especially as we are uh, going through this pandemic. So thank you again for your support in our corridor, and we look forward to the day when we can show you the progress that we've made in our corridor in person. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you. And uh, with that, with with the amendments that uh, John Prey has outlined, do we have a motion to support with amendments? This is Commissioner Guardino. I move approval. Commissioner Inman seconds. Thank you. Douglas, can you read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes, sir. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Guardino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Mr. Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you very much. And um, we are now moving to items 65 and 66. Lori Waters. Good morning, commissioners. I will present item 65, and then Beverly will present item 66. Commissioners, item 65 is an action item to adopt the 2021 Active Transportation Program guidelines. Metropolitan Planning Organization competitive component for the Fresno Council of Governments. Senate Bill 99 allows the commission to adopt guidelines proposed by MPOs for administering their MPO competitive com component of the ATP. The MPO guidelines must be consistent with the state guidelines, but they are allowed discretion in certain areas, such as asking for a supplemental call for projects and project selection criteria and weighting. Adopting their own regional guidelines allows the MPOs to encourage projects that further regional priorities. As allowed per statute, the Fresno Council of Governments will hold a supplemental call for projects and require Apple applicants to submit a regional supplemental application and a formal regional resolution of local support. The supplemental application will consist of the state's 2021 Active Transportation Program application with additional project selection criteria and weighting tailored to the Fresno Council of Government's needs. Okay. The commission adopted the, uh, I'm almost done. The commission adopted the 2021 Active Transportation program regional guidelines proposed by the Metropolitan Transportation Commission on March 25th, 2020, the San Joaquin Council of Governments on May 13th, 2020, the Sacramento Area Council of Governments, the San Diego Association of Governments, the Southern California Association of Governments, and the Tulare County Association of Governments 2021 ATP guidelines at the June 2020 commission meeting. The current Council of Governments, the Stanislaus Council of Governments, and the Tahoe Metropolitan Planning Organization will not propose regional guidelines specific to the 2021 Active Transportation Program guidelines. Commission staff has reviewed Fresno COGS guidelines and has found them consistent with the state guidelines, and staff will recommend adoption of their guidelines. Thank you very much. And now, um, Beverly, if you could present item 66. Commissioners, the item 66 is an action item to adopt three additional projects to the 2019 Active Transportation Program, California Conservation Corps, and Local Community Conservation Corps Program for fiscal, fiscal year 2020-2021. At the June 2020 meeting, the commission adopted 16 projects for the ATP California Conservation Corp and Local Community Conservation Corp program. These projects totaled $3,425,000 out of the $4 million available for fiscal year 2020-2021. The California Conservation Corps initial programming request did not meet the statutory requirement that states that 50% of annual funding must be for projects implemented by certified local community conservation corps. The California Conservation Corps reviewed eight additional projects and recommends three projects for funding, totaling the remaining capacity of $575,000 for fiscal year 2020-2021. Three projects are on the substitution list and two projects were not recommended for funding. Staff is recommending approval of the proposed list of projects, which is included in your book item as attachment B. Commission staff recommendations are consistent with the recommendations provided by the California Conservation Corps. Staff is also recommending approval of the substitution list included in your book item as attachment C. 
Item 66 is being grouped with item 65 and staff recommends approval of both items. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, do you have any questions on item 65 or 66? Is there any public comment on these items? Okay, with that, could we entertain a motion? Eager, so moved. Thank you, Commissioner Eager. Move, Thank you. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Mr. Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Mr. Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Okay, great. Next, we will take um, tabs 67 and 69 together. And to, with that, thank you very much. Anya. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Anya Allenbacher, and I'll be presenting tab 67 through 69. Tab 67 is an action item to amend the current local partnership formulate program of projects to revise the scope and title of one project in Nevada County and add one project in San Mateo County. Specifically, the amendment will add the Northern Cities Expansion Project for the City County Association of Governments of San Mateo County with a programmed amount of 122,000 in fiscal year 2021. And also revise the Town of Truckee's project title from 2019 slurry seal project to 2020 paving and draining, drainage, Bridge Street, Jaboom Street and Church Street project. And also revise the scope from a slurry seal project to a paving and drainage project, including a project cost decrease. The Town of Truckee received an approved allocation for this project in June 2019, and due to the timing of advertisement, the bids were well above the engineer's estimate. Consequently, the agency requested and received a 12-month contract award time extension to allow the agency to rebid in the spring of 2020. Due to the unforeseen COVID-19 pandemic and stay-at-home orders that occurred in the spring, the agency has requested the scope change so that the project can be delivered in a cost-effective manner and to also consider the projected revenue losses associated with the COVID-19 pandemic impacts. Staff is recommending approval because this is such a unique circumstance and the town of Truckee is a very small jurisdiction at risk of losing their 2019 local partnership formulaic funding. With this amendment, a total of 40 agencies have programmed funds for 111 projects totaling $292 million. This action leaves $28 million of the 2019 local partnership formulate program funding available for programming through June 30th, 2021. Tab 68 is an action item to amend the allocation for the Town of Truckee's project to revise the project title, project scope, and contributions from other sources in accordance with the revised vote box attached to the book item. The original allocation was approved at the June 2019 commission meeting. And please note that there is a revision to this um, tab on the change list and the book item and the attachments were revised to reflect the correct project title. Tab 69, oops, excuse me. Tab 69 is an action item to approve an amendment to the 2020 Local Partnership Formulaic Program Advanced Program of Projects as identified in attachments B and C in your book item. The San Diego Association of Governments, Contra Costa Transportation Authority, City County Association of Governments of San Mateo County and Sacramento Transportation Authority have requested to program four projects in advance of the 2020 Local Partnership Formulaic Program adoption in December of 2020 to accelerate project delivery. Specifically, the advanced programming will program 600,000 of available formulaic funding for the Northern Cities expansion 
project in San Mateo County in fiscal year 22-23. Program 6,546,000 of available formulaic funding in Costa, Contra Costa County for the automated driving system demonstration program with 175,000 for project approval and environmental documentation in fiscal year 2021, 2,894,000 for plan specifications and estimates in fiscal year 21-22, and 3,477,000 for construction in fiscal year 22-23. Also program 366, thousand of available formulaic funding for the Rancho Cordova citywide street rehabilitation project in Sacramento County in fiscal year 2021. And last program, 4 million of available formulaic funding for the State Route 94, State Route 125 South to East connector project in San Diego County with 3 million for right of way and 1 million for right of way support in fiscal year 2021. This action will result in programming an additional 11,512,000 for a total, a grand total of um, advanced program of 45,159,000 of available 2020 local partnership formulaic program funding. Staff has reviewed tabs 67, 68, and 69, and they are consistent with the local partnership program guidelines and staff recommends your approval of these tabs as presented in this um, including the noted changes reflected in the change list for tab 68. Wonderful thank you very much Anya. Um, with that are there any questions from commissioners? Any public comment? Nope and with that could we entertain a motion? Madam Chair, this is Commissioner Inman. I move that we accept staff's recommendations. Commissioner Alvarado, second. Thank you. Douglas, read the roll, please. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Guardino. Aye. Thank you. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. And now um, we will take um, tab 70 and 71 together. Good morning, commissioners. I will be presenting tab 70 and 71 together. They are action items for the Proposition 1B traffic light synchronization program. Tab 70 is an action item to amend the Proposition 1B traffic light synchronization program to deprogram one project and add a new project. Specifically, the amendment will deprogram 748,000 from the City of Los Angeles Adaptive Traffic Control System Central Business District Project and program 16,830,000 to, to a new project the City of Los Angeles Automated Traffic Surveillance and Control Enhancement for an Advanced Transportation Infrastructure Project in fiscal years 2021. Following a request from the City of Los Angeles, an allocated amount of 748,000 in traffic light synchronization funds was rescinded by the commission at the March 2019 meeting. The city determined the project was fully funded with other funds and no longer needed the traffic light synchronization funds. In addition, the city requested to program 16,830,000, ,000, which includes 748,000 from the available traffic light synchronization program cost savings to the new project. This project includes enhancements to the city of Los Angeles automated traffic surveillance and control system, which manages all of the city's 4,738 traffic signals over 503 square miles. The infrastructure enhancement will be made to the communication system and to traffic signal signals along key transit routes and multimodal corridors. This project will provide benefits and congestion reduction, mobility increase, and safety improvements. The project is expected to further improve 
peak hour travel time by 11.8%, reduced delay by 132,738 7, 132, hours, and reduced 150 potential crashes annually in the project area. Tab 71 is an action item to approve one Proposition 1B traffic light synchronization program project baseline agreement and establish this agreement as the basis for project delivery and monitoring in accordance with the Commission's traffic light synchronization program guidelines. This agreement is for the City of Los Angeles automated traffic surveillance and control enhancement for an advanced transportation infrastructure project. This project has a total cost pro project cost of over 17 million with 16 million 830,000 in traffic light synchronization funds. Staff has reviewed tab 70 and 71 and they are consistent with the traffic light synchronization program guidelines and staff recommend your approval of tab 70 and 71 as presented in the staff recommendations. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, commissioners? Any public comment? Nope. With that, could we entertain a motion? So, uh, Commissioner uh, Davis would make that motion. Thank you very much. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Commissioner Burke. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes, sir. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Guardino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you very much. And now we move to item 72. Matthew. Good morning, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Tab 72 is an action item to approve a project amendment to change the funding plan for two of the sub projects in the Santa Barbara Multimodal Corridor Project, which is programmed in the 2018 Solutions for Congested Corridors Program. Specifically, the project amendment will reduce $2,040,000 from the Santa Monica Road Via Real Interchange Improvements Project. The new estimate after completing design reduced the project cost for this project. The project amendment will also add that $2,040,000 to the Summerland HOV Segment 4C project. The project had a cost increase due to the need of adding a retaining wall to this project. The retaining wall is needed to protect the highway and provide additional safety components. The total cost increase to this project is $19,548,000 and local and federal funds will cover the remaining balance of this cost increase. I do want to note that there is a change to this book item reflected in the change list. It clarifies that the follow-up mitigation and landscape that will be split from the STIP funds do not require a STIP amendment. Per STIP guidelines, the, STIP can, uh, the, STIPs, the split can be done at the time of this vote. Staff recommends your approval of tab 72 as presented in this item. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, do you have any questions on this item? And there is an attendee comment, so. Yes, we have Thomas Becker. Tom, you are now self-muted and free to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, good, thank you. Um, I submitted a comment letter on this agenda item along with two other agenda items on Tuesday, your staff acknowledged that they received that letter. So you should have all received it. Am I, am I now cut off? Nope. Okay. Hear you. you know, the, the, the control and the audio on this thing is really bad. I hope you have patience with me here. Anyway, um, I submitted a letter on Tuesday to your staff, your staff acknowledged receiving that um, that letter. Um, there is a serious issue going on here in Santa Barbara County with the project that you want to fund here. The issue is that I have filed a uh, an appeal of the California, or excuse me, the Coastal Development Permit for this project because I believed that staff 
County staff failed to properly analyze reduction of vehicle mile traveled as an alternative to this construction project, which by the way, minimizing VMT is a, is a requirement of the Coastal Act for any public works project in the coastal zone. You're gonna be in Santa Barbara in October. And my appeal will be heard by the um, uh, Board of Supervisors in September. I'm requesting that you not, that you simply just put off any funding for this HOV project until my appeal is heard, and then you have all the facts laid before you in October when you come to Santa Barbara. This is a very serious issue. The state is claiming to the federal government that you're attempting to reduce vehicle mile standard, but yet this project by Caltrans and the county's own admission will increase, induce vehicle miles traveled. And I'm contending in my appeal to the Coastal Development Permit that it violates the Coastal Act by doing that. So I would suggest you all read my letter. It's more detailed than what I can give you today for this item, and then there are two others, especially number 84, tab 84. So please read my letter and take it very, take it under consideration very seriously what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Director Weiss has a comment to make, and we have another attendee comment, but I'd like to hear Director Weiss first. So I, I just wanted to, to let commissioners and members of the public know that this item is posted on our, the letter is posted on our website, and it was sent out with the uh, late items, the pinks. It's uh, it's labeled on the website tab 72, 74, 84 letter. And um, this this I, this item is is what is uh, this project is the one being pulled from the uh, five various book items that were uh, mentioning that I mentioned earlier. So, Matthew, do you have other comments on that? Yeah, so I just want to confirm or clarify rather um, that tab 72 is a program amendment or actually it's a project amendment. So it's actually it's a programming uh, it's a programming action. So this is not a financial allocation approval um, as Director Weiss mentioned uh, tab 84 is the the project allocation and I believe that has been pulled from this meetings agenda. So this is simply a program uh, program action. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you very much for that response, Matthew. And we have another attendee uh, comment. Yes. Yes. Uh, we have Tim Devins. Uh, you're free to speak. Okay. Thank you, Chair and Commissioners. Um, Tim Govins, District Five Director with Caltrans. I just wanted to point out, um, as as Matthew had, that this this item is just the programming. It wasn't the allocation. And so thank, thank you for mentioning that. But as well, what Mr. Becker was bringing up is not a CEQA issue that, that um, this board hears on CEQA. This is with a coastal development permit and his permit um, questions are for a later segment. Um, segments, as you know, this, this um, project is from 4A through 4E. His, his are for local roads um, intersections that are associated with 4D and E, as well as those um, intersections have some local funding on it and are not subject to action at this board for the allocation for those. So I just wanted to add some clarity of that, and you'll probably be hearing more on this in the future. Thank you. Okay. So with that, um, um, could, we can entertain a motion on this item while 84 is pulled. Yvonne Burke moves. Great. Approval. Thank you. Do we have a second? Commissioner Alvarado, second. Thank you. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Commissioner Inman. Aye. 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 Thank you, Commissioner Gardino. Thank you, Commissioner Inman. Commissioner Kehoe? Aye. Commissioner Liu? Aye. Commissioner Tabaloni? Chair Norton? Aye. Chair, the item is approved.
Thank you. And um, items 73 and 74 will be taken together and Hannah Walter will be presenting them. Hannah, thank you. Good morning, commissioners. Um, item 73 is a project amendment and item 74 is a supplemental funds request for the Etiwanda Avenue grade separation project. The project is located in the city of Rancho Cucamonga. It elevates a road over a rail line and adds an HOV lane and an auxiliary lane to the road there, along with sidewalks and a bike lane. Um, the city is requesting to revise the scope of the project to mitigate impacts to a water line that's located under the structure and that was negatively impacted by the original project design. They're requesting to revise the schedule to allow time to complete um, design and right of way. This will delay the start of construction and the city is requesting to reprogram 52.15 million of state trade quarter enhancement program funds to fiscal year 22-23. In regards to the supplemental funds request, um, it's due to the design changes, some decisions about utility relocations and who's responsible to pay for those, and um, increased property acquisition costs. The city is requesting additional an additional three million in design and thirteen million in right of way, and Caltrans will be funding those out of their statewide forty percent of TSEP funding. Um, the baseline agreement will be amended to reflect these changes. These requests are allowable under the trade corridor program, and staff recommends approval. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions from the commissioners? And there's no public comment, so we can entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I move approval. This is Commissioner Inman. Thank you. And Chico seconds. Thank you. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Eason. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Thank you, Aye. Commissioner Inman. Commissioner Inman? Aye. Thank you, Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. Now we're moving to allocations, and we have um, items 75 through 78 that we will be taking together. Gertesh? Thank you, Chair Norton. Uh, as you mentioned, tabs 75 through 78 will be taken together. Tab number 75 is an action item to allocate one minor A project from the SHOP minor construction program. The project is a $1 million financial contribution only to the city of Placerville. To maintain a financial constraint, this project will be a substitute for another project of equal allocation from the approved 2021 minor program. Staff has reviewed this item and recommends approval, and John Prey will now present tabs 76 and 77. Thank you. Item 76 is an action item for shop construction allocations. Staff is recommending that project number 24 be pulled from this item. This is related to the Santa Barbara 101 project that was previously removed from tabs 63 and 64. With this change, this item will allocate approximately $1.2 billion for 52 shop projects. With this $1.2 billion, Caltrans will improve 23 bridges, 423 lane miles of pavement, 266 culverts, and 25 TMS elements. And those are related to the four primary asset classes. Staff has reviewed these allocations, and with the exception of project number 24, recommends approval of this item. And item 77 is an action item for shop pre-construction support allocations. This item will allocate approximately $85 million for 85 shop pre-construction phases for PA and ED, PS and E, and right-of-way support. Staff has reviewed these allocations and recommends approval of this item. And then James Anderson will do 78 before we take action. Thank you, James. Greetings, Chair Norton and members of the commission. I have the pleasure of presenting the next item. Tab 78 is an action item to allocate 2.7 million to settle lawsuits resulting 
from the 2017 Canyon fires in Orange County. This is a fourth allocation to come before the commission regarding this, this item. The commission has previously allocated 40 million to settle lawsuits with other claimants. While litigation is still ongoing, commission staff expects the department to request additional allocations in the future to settle the six or seven unresolved lawsuits. As previously mentioned, this item is grouped with items 75, 76, and 77, and staff recommends approval of, of all items. Thank you very much. Um, commissioners, do you have any comments on 75 through 78? We have no public comments. Uh, so could we entertain a motion? Commissioner Liu, I'll move the items. Commissioner Davis, I second the items. Thank you. Douglas, can you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. Next, we will be taking items 79, 80, and 82. We will be skipping over 81 for a reason we'll disclose later. So with that, could we have Teresa present 79, 80, and 82? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. TAF, under TAF 79 is an action item. This is a STIP allocation request of 94,967,000 for the following three projects on the state highway system. It's the I-80 Interchange Bicycle Pedestrian Overcrossing Access in Alameda County, the State Route 46 Expressway in Kern County, and the State Route 99 Tega Six Lane Winding Project in Tulare County. In the change list, there are a couple of corrections to the State Route 46 project, which include the outputs and the final right-of-way amounts have been corrected. Staff has reviewed this request and finds it consistent with the STIP guidelines and the program. Agenda item 80, this is also an action item. This is a STIP allocation request of 29,656,000 for 32 locally administered STIP projects off the state highway system. Uh, it includes six of these, six of these projects are, lo are local road capital improvement projects in Siskiyou, Trinity, Napa, Los Angeles, and Mono counties. The remaining 26 are for planning, programming, and monitoring to 26 years. That has reviewed these requests and finds it consistent with the STIP program and the guidelines. Agenda item 82 is an action item. This is an allocation request of 91,654,000 for seven projects programmed in the transit and inner city rail capital program. The allocations include three projects from the 2018 program. Uh, including the implementation of wide broadband communications network and bike parking enhancements to the Peninsula Corridor Electrification Expansion Project. The other four projects are from the 2020 program of projects. And uh, they, they include one project for PSNE for the Del Mar Bluffs Stabilization Project uh, Phase 5 in San Diego County. St staff has reviewed these requests and finds it consistent with the Transit Energy Rail Capital Program, an update under Agenda Item 33, and staff recommends your approval of items 79, 80, and 82. Please note item 83 and 84 have been withdrawn. Thank you very much, Teresa. Uh, if we could take a motion, if we have no public comment, and uh, do we have any comments from the commissioners? Okay, could we have a motion on 79, 80, and 82, please? Commissioner Eager, so moved. Work second. The second. Great. Thank you. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Mr. Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. 
Thank you. And now we'll take up item 81. Madam Chair, yes. this is Commissioner Inman. I wish to recuse myself because my employer, Majestic Realty, has property in immediate proximity of this project. I will recuse myself. Thank you. We'll call you back when we're completed with this item. Teresa, can you present item 81? Um, Commissioners, agenda item 81 is an action item. This is an allocation request uh, for $17,941,000 for the East Otay Mesa Land Port of Entry segment project from the Federal Coordinated Border Infrastructure Funds. Staff has reviewed this request and finds it consistent with the program of projects for the Federal CBI program and STIP guidelines. Staff recommends your approval. Great. Are there any questions from the commissioners? Okay. Any and no uh, public comment. So, if we could entertain a motion. Uh, Commissioner Eager, so moved. Commissioner Guardino, so. Great. Okay. Uh, Douglas, could you please call the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, sure the yeah. motion is approved. Thanks. Let's make sure we get Commissioner Inman back in the room. <laughs> Commissioner Inman, are you back? Okay. Um, oh. I'm back, Hillary. Excellent. Thank you. Um, so now, if we could get uh, items 85 and 86, Hannah Walter will present. Hey, good morning. Um, item 85 is an allocation request for $8 million for construction for a grade separation project at the Port of Stockton. Item 86 is an allocation request for a project in Solano County that um, it replaces the highway connector and builds some new ramps at an interchange where I-80, I-680, and State Route 12 come together. Um, the Solano County Transportation Agency and Caltrans are requesting to advance dip funds since the project is ready to go. The commission in the past has provided more flexibility with SIP funds when the project is jointly funded and includes SB1 competitive program funding. Um, staff will continue to monitor the SIP to ensure that current year commitments are met. These requests are consistent with program guidelines and staff recommends approval. Thank you. And on both these items, 85 and 86, is there any public comment? Nope. And uh, any questions from the commissioners? With that, can we please entertain a motion? Uh, Madam Chair, I would make the motion to approve, Commissioner Davis. Thank you, Commissioner Davis. We have a second. Commissioner Eager seconds. Excellent. With that, Douglas, please call the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Mr. Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Mr. Tavoloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. Okay, now we will take items 87 through 89 together, and Christine Gordon will be presenting as well as Alicia Siquiera Smith. Thank you, Chair Norton. Uh, so yes, tabs 87 and 89 are action items that will be taken together. I will be presenting action item 87. It is pertaining to the Trade Corridors Improvement Fund. There is an amendment to rescind a prior deallocation request coming from the department. They are requesting approval to rescind 98,000 in program funds that were deallocated from the completed Laurel Street grade separation project in San Bernardino County at the June 2020 commission meeting. Following that meeting, department headquarters staff were later informed that the assumed 98,000 in cost savings during project closeout had actually been expended prior to the June meeting. 
This rescission will not affect the programming and allocation actions taken at our June meeting, and it will preserve the funding plan for the State Route 60 Central Avenue interchange project in San Bernardino County. All project deallocations are rounded to the thousands, and this has it created enough capacity along with administrative cost savings to absorb this minor correction that was needed through program savings. With that, I would like to turn it over to Christine Gordon with the Local Partnership Program. Thank you. Thank you. TAP 88 is an allocation request for $4 million in Local Partnership Formulaic Program funds for the state-administered Route 94-125 connector project on the state highway system in San Diego County, programmed in fiscal year 2021. This project will construct a southbound Route 125 to eastbound Route 94 freeway connector ramp in and near the cities of La Mesa and Lemon Grove. The project will reduce congestion and improve traffic movement. Tab 89 is an allocation request for 200,000 in local partnership formulaic program funds for the locally administered commercial street phase two project off the state highway system in Nevada County programmed in fiscal year 2019-20. This project will consist of 0.15 miles of local road rehabilitation and pedestrian improvements in the city of Nevada City on Commercial Street. The project will reduce traffic congestion and improve pedestrian safety. Staff has reviewed the request and the items are consistent with the local partnership program guidelines and trade corridors improvement fund guidelines. Therefore, staff recommends your approval of tabs 87, 88 and 89. That's great. Uh, thank you very much, Christine. Uh, are there any public comments? Any questions from the commissioners? With that, could we entertain a motion? This is Commissioner Guardino. Move. Thank you. Commissioner Inman will second that motion. Thank you very much. Douglas, will you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Guardino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the item is approved. Thank you. And um, items 90 and 91 will be taken together. Lori Waters. Yes, Commissioners, tab 90 is an action item to approve allocations of 13,836,000 for 17 active transportation program projects. Staff has reviewed these requests and the allocations are consistent with the ATP guidelines in the adopted program. So staff will recommend your approval. Tab 91 is an action item to approve an allocation of 574,710 for the California Conservation Corps to fully allocate the three projects as shown on the att attachment of this agenda item and adopted by the commission at this meeting under item 66. Staff has reviewed this request. The allocation is consistent with the ATP guidelines and staff recommends your approval. Thank you very much. With that, um, no, there's no public comment on these items and commissioners, do you have any questions on these items? Okay, if not, we can entertain a motion. Commissioner Kehoe moves 90 and 91. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? Commissioner Davis will second that. Thank you. Douglas, please read the roll. Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Guardino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. And now we're moving to time extension requests. Um, item 91, Gertej. Yes. Thank you, Chair Norton. Commissioners, item 92 is an action item to extend the period of project development expenditures for 18 projects 
per the shop guidelines. Of the 18 projects, three of the, these projects have a time extension request that is greater than the 20 month maximum time extension allowed by the guidelines. The department is requesting an exception to the shop guidelines to allow for a more than 20 month time extension for three long lead projects. Staff has reviewed these items and recommends approval of the time extensions as shown on the time extension table that was included with the additional materials distributed on August 7th, 2020. Thank you very much. Are there any questions, commissioners? And no public comment? With that, could we entertain a motion? Commissioner Eager, so moved. Second by Commissioner Alvarado. Thank you. Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. With that, this is our last item, uh, item 93, and Lori Waters. Yes, commissioners, tab 93 is an action item to consider amending the project allocation time extension for one project in the active transportation program. This request is consistent with the interim timely use of funds policy and staff recommends approval as shown on the time extension table. Thank you. Uh, as there are no public comments on this item and no questions from the commission, could we please entertain a motion? Commissioner Burke moves aye. Moves <laughs> approval. <laughs> Great. Commissioner Davis seconds that. Excellent. Uh, Douglas, could you please read the roll? Commissioner Alvarado. Yes. Commissioner Burke. Aye. Commissioner Davis. Aye. Commissioner Eager. Aye. Commissioner Gordino. Aye. Commissioner Inman. Aye. Commissioner Kehoe. Aye. Commissioner Liu. Aye. Commissioner Tavaloni. Chair Norton. Aye. Chair, the motion is approved. Thank you. Uh, do we have any final closing public comments? Okay, thank you. And are there any um, closing thoughts from the commissioners? Madam Chair, it's Commissioner Inman. I just really want to thank our staff because um, you and our staff, I think, have done a great job of managing uh, efficient meetings for all of us during these difficult times. So I know it doesn't just happen. It takes a lot of hard work. So thank you all. Thank you, Commissioner Inman. I just wanted to um, also thank our staff and adjourn um, with the following facts, because I think it's very important as we talk about what we're doing to stimulate the economy and support infrastructure and jobs, that we highlight what the sum of what we've done in these two days has been. In highway matters, we allocated $1,848,000,000 to the highway project allocation with total jobs created being over 20,000. And in the mass transportation state allocations, we allocated $126 million with 1,300 jobs created. I wanna congratulate you all and thank the public for their participation and thank our presenters. And to say thank you again for the staff and your hard work in bringing all of these items to us. Have a wonderful afternoon. This meeting is in